Hey guys, Jake from 8020 Media here. Today we're going to be talking about GM's Stabilitrack system and more specifically the frequent and annoying service Stabilitrack system and service traction control lights that pop up on all GM and Chevy vehicles that have Stabilitrack equipped. Um, Stabilitrack was introduced in the early to mid 2000s and has been featured on a number of their trucks, sedans, and other vehicles since then. Stabilitrack is another um, traction control related system, but it functions a little bit differently than your typical traction control does. The way traction control works is it limits the amount of power that is being sent to a certain wheel whenever it determines that that wheel has no traction. The Stabilitrack system is similar, but more so utilizes the braking system rather than controlling the amount of power being sent to a wheel. Um, what it does is it uses the ABS speed sensors that are in your wheels, um, essentially to determine when the wheel speed of one wheel is different than the wheel speed of all of the other wheels. Um, and then what it can do is apply braking to um, specific brakes individually uh, to help regain stability or traction. So this system is predominantly um, built for, as the name suggests, stabilizing your car and keeping it going in a straight line. So a good example is um, if you're fishtailing, um, the way Stabilitrack is going to kick in is it's either going to apply a little bit of brake pressure to the front left brake or to the front right brake, depending on you know which way you're fishtailing. Um, but the whole purpose is to get your car going back in a straight line. So long story short, um, it uses your brakes to help control you know the angle or direction of your vehicle when it determines that the angle or direction is not you know the direction that it should be going. Um, the issue with Stabilitrack is. GM built a safety kind of protocol or programmed the safety uh, functionality into it along with the uh, traction control system that essentially turns off Stabilitrack and turns off traction control if your engine is not uh, providing consistent power or if your car is not receiving uh, a consistent or, or driving at a consistent speed. And so the best way to think about it is anytime you know, you're looking um, at your RPMs, anytime you see a little blip in your RPMs, that causes the Stabilitrack and traction control systems to turn off uh, because both of those systems need consistent power to function properly. Um, and so when it comes down to why these lights turn on so frequently and tend to turn on and turn off, um, there's really kind of two categories that I'm going to break it down into as for the issues. Um, there's about 12 different or 15 or 20 different issues that can actually cause these lights to go off, uh, but they really fall into two categories. And the first one is issues with the actual Stabilitrack system itself. Um, so as I mentioned, it uses the brakes, the wheel speed sensors, it also uses, in addition to that, it uses the uh, steering position sensor to tell you know, what angle your steering wheel is at. And so if you have an issue with the Stabilitrack system itself, your issue is usually going to be with the steering wheel position sensor, the ABS wheel speed sensors, or the EBCM, which is the electronic brake control module, also frequently referred to as the ABS module. Um, the EBCM has a relay circuit, and if that relay circuit goes bad, it'll throw off uh, the EBCM itself and can cause these lights to come on. Um, the wheel speed sensors are pretty self-explanatory. Every single wheel has its own sensor. Um, and then the steering wheel position sensor um, is kind of a third thing that can go wrong with the Stabilitrack system itself. And so if you have a Stabilitrack issue with the Stabilitrack system, those are the three things. Now, the caveat is that there are a lot of non-Stabilitrack related things that can cause the Stabilitrack lights to go off. As I mentioned, GM built these safety protocols in there that anytime your RPMs aren't consistent, it automatically turns off. And so when we think about that, any issue with your car 
that can cause some fluctuation in RPM, such as you know misfires, pre-detonation, um, and things like that, will cause stability track and traction control to turn off. And so when you have these stability track lights coming on, the challenge is determining: okay, do I have an issue with the stability track system itself, or do I have an issue with some other underlying engine problem? that is causing my RPMs or my engine to not really run really smoothly to where it's then going into the safety protocol and turning off the stability track and traction control systems. Um, so diving into the second issue or the second, my second kind of tier of issues, um, a lot of things that can control this. The most kind of prevalent or predominant issues is with your spark plugs and ignition coils. If you have bad plugs, bad coils, you're going to be misfiring and misfires are going to cause your RPMs to flutter and that's going to cause these systems to turn off. Um, additionally, another thing, uh, another kind of system is fueling that can cause a lot of uh, rough idling and uh, you know performance related issues and so if you have a bad fuel pump or you have a clogged fuel filter that'll throw off your air to fuel ratios, which can also cause misfires, pre detonation, rough idling, poor performance, yada, yada, yada. Um, in addition to those two things, which by the way, those are where I would start is look at your ignition, make sure you don't have any ignition related issues. Look at fueling, make sure you don't have any fueling issues. If you don't have any issues there and you don't have any issues with the Stabila Track system itself, um, there's a few other things. The throttle position sensor can get clogged up and dirty. The throttle body, same thing can happen there. Um, you can have a bad ABS pump, uh, sometimes a bad brake light switch, which is what causes the brake thing to illuminate on your dashboard. Sometimes that can cause this issue as well. Um, the, the tire pressure sensors can cause this issue too. Um, and so there's a few kind of smaller, more tangential issues that can cause it. But generally speaking, if your issue isn't with stability track, it's going to be with fuel delivery or ignition. Um, and so in terms of kind of diagnosing what the underlying issue is, the best place to look is um, at your engine codes. If you have any existing engine codes that are being shown, there are a lot of cases where the stability track lights come on and off, but you're not getting a check engine light or a fault code. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But starting with the trouble codes, um, if you have a bad, a bad EBCM relay unit, you're gonna get a code for that. If you have bad wheel speed sensors, you're gonna get a code for that. Um, if you have misfires, you're probably gonna get a code for that. Sometimes you don't always get a code for that. Um, but various different sensor issues or um, you know air to fuel issue issues will, will cause whatever underlying symptoms you have which will throw a check engine code so step one in diagnosing these problems is to read whatever engine codes you have and let that lead you to what the underlying problem is if you don't have any of those issues like i said there are a few weird things like the brake light switch that can cause it um, and you're not going to get a, a check engine light for that. You might notice that your, your brake light you know, stays illuminated, um, but you're not going to get a check engine light for that. Um, you know, your TPMS sensors could, could cause this as well. You know, you'll probably notice that those are off because the light will be on for it. Uh, but a few other kind of weird things that some people have found works to get these things to turn off is um, running a full tank of E85. And so if your car is capable of it, um, the majority of GM vehicles are capable of running 100% E85. Um, direct injected engines aren't necessarily all the time, so just make sure you can run E85. But run, running E85 um, will help kind of clear out your fuel system, um, which can help cause, you know, or, or fix any underlying issues that might be causing a rough idle that's not necessarily causing a check engine light. Um, cleaning the fuel filter is another one too. And then kind of a, a, another odd one is deactivating um, the AFM system, which is active fuel management, which turns off um, half of your cylinders under ideal driving conditions to uh, give you greater fuel economy. Um, so just to recap, uh, start with you know 
check engine light. Do you have any codes there? Look into those underlying codes. Two problems you have is with your Stabilitrack system itself, which is just a couple sensors, some relay circuits, and a couple different things that can affect the issues there. Um, I will point out, if you do have an issue with Stabilitrack itself, um, the majority of the time there's going to be a check engine light because every single one of the sensors and systems that control Stabilitrack has a check engine light and a fault code associated with it. And so you should have something there. If you don't have it, then you need to start looking into the alternative um, ideas that I mentioned. You know, if your throttle position sensor fails, you know, you'll get a check engine light for that. But there are certain things like a dirty throttle body that can throw off your air to fuel ratios a little bit to give you enough of a hiccup in your RPMs to turn traction control and stability track off, but not be a big enough performance issue to throw a check engine light. So if you don't have any check engine lights, you're gonna have to get a little bit more creative um, and consider what exact symptoms you have with your car and what other problems can cause those symptoms. Um, anyways, I hope this was helpful in at least diagnosing and starting to look at what's causing this. There's a ton of frustration out there with this issue just since there are so many different things that can cause it and there's not really one clear guide on, hey, go fix this, fix this, or fix this. And so um, if you want to kind of reference anything back that I said in this video, we have an article written on our Chevy truck website that details everything that I talked about and lists out specifically all of the different sensors and modules and um, you know things that can cause a stability track issue. And so feel free to reference that article um, and use that kind of as a checklist. You know, okay, spark plugs, ignition coils are good. You know, wheel speed sensors are good, and so on. Um, anyways. Hope that was helpful and uh, we'll see you guys back in our next video.